I'm going to show you in God's word that when you say something and your heart believes what you say, then you'll have the manifestation of what the word of God says. Very simple, but sometimes we don't know it. And so we, we, we put, I wish it would happen, or maybe it would happen. Now, perfect example here. How many of us here, and I need you to raise your hands. How many of us here believe that you were born again? I mean, if, if I was to come up to you and say, brother, you are not born again. Yes, I am. No, you're not. I can't talk you out of it, right? That's because your heart believes it. And no one can take it away. Now, God is activating and manifesting that heart to get what the mouth says it should have. Healing, peace, salvation, provisions, a hope for the future. Everything that you believe in your heart. And we're going to look at the scripture. But God says, if you believe in your heart, you'll speak it with your mouth. Remember? Remember? If you say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and shall not doubt, but believe in your heart that those things you say shall come to I just got that scripture. That's not part of the scripture. It shall what? Come to pass. He didn't say it will come to pass in your time. He said it will come to pass. So all we have to believe God is that it's going to come to pass. So if you're believing God that it's going to come to pass, there's no time you're going to be on God, put on God, because you know, I, I just know it's going to come to pass. I don't know how, but it's going to come to pass. God will give you the ability to, to carry, to, to be strengthened and encouraged until it comes. Many things me and my wife have prayed for, and we, ha we have received many of those, but there's other things we're still believing for. But I, can, I truly can believe it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen before Jesus comes because it's going to manifest on this earth. The promises he's promised us. The things he's promised you upon this earth, they're going to come to pass before Jesus comes. So you know it's going to happen. So just believe it. So I'm going to share with you a scripture. And this scripture, many times we speak about it. It's, it's a salvation scripture, which I truly believe it is. But how many, how many of us know that God can give scriptures in many different revelations? That's why when somebody says they're going to be talking about finances or talking about the heart or talking about the tongue, you say, well, I heard a teaching on that already. I'm good. No, because God gives everybody different revelation of it. And so today you're going to see a new revelation of this scripture. It's in Romans chapter 10. It starts with verse 8. Now remember, listen to this. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth, Amen. That's the same as, as speaking it out. The Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we see that the confession and believing in your heart, the manifestation of salvation comes. You are living it right now. And God says, my word is the same if you need something in the natural. If you have it in your heart, because God says he puts all good things in our heart, right? He puts it in our heart what to desire. He says that in his word. We're going to see in scripture. He goes, I give you the desires of your heart. So now when he gives us a desire, what do we do with it? We speak it out. And when we speak it out in the name of Jesus, because it talks about here, the Lord Jesus, we have to say it in the name of Jesus. If we say it in the name of Jesus, it comes to pass. This is God's promise to us, amen? And so I want to share with you and listen to this. Psalms 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart. Remember David? Create in me a clean heart, oh God. He wants a clean heart before God. And so that word clean, it means a heart that's open to God. I don't know about you, but I want my heart open to God. It means a willing heart. That when God asks you to do something, you do it. It also means free from impurity. A clean heart means free from impurity. It means flawless. And that word flawless means unbroken, undamaged, sound, and whole. Now, no matter, and remember when God talked about today, he goes, a heart that's freed, a heart that, a heart that, that, that is going to be released from something. Some of us had had damage done to our spiritual hearts and God says look I'm about to fix that 
I'm going to make you whole again. And so only God can do that. But we need to know that when God does it, we say that he does it. God, thank you. Thank you, God, for Psalms 51, verse 10, that you have given me a clean heart, a whole heart, a heart of purity. See, you may not feel that, but you got to say it. And when you say it, because you believe it, it's going to start happening. People come against you, you're going to say, heaven and earth will pass away, but not God's word. Words not gonna, those words aren't going to hurt me because my heart is pure. I'm not going to have anything in it that's not pure. Proverbs 23, verse, excuse me, Proverbs 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Amen? So in other words, saints, everything, all the issues, come on. I'll raise, I know you don't want to raise your hands. I'll raise them for you. I'll raise them for me. we got some issues. Everybody has issues. And God says, guess where all those issues are? Right here. Did you know that, that that's, what, that's the only thing God sees? He doesn't see us physically. He sees our heart. That's why he knows when we're troubled. He knows when we're troubled. And so God, said, God talks about, he says, that keep your heart in all diligence from out of it springs the issues of life. Guard your heart. Another translation says, guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. It is the source of life. How do we keep our hearts pure? And how do we keep our hearts open to God? Psalms 119 verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. I heard a, I heard a teaching that says, and I agree with that teaching. The only thing I want in my heart is God's word. That's the only thing I want in my that's the only thing I want in my heart is God's word. Because if you have that, you can't miss it. You can't miss it, saints. Mark 16, 18 says this. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How many of us know that sometimes we need some recovery in our heart, some healing in our heart? Amen? So what did God just say? As us being born again Christians, filled with the spirit of the living God, and God's talking to us. He goes, look. And if you read that, if you read verse, uh, if you read, uh, excuse me, verse 17 of it, it says that those who believe in my name cast out devils, speak with new tongues, right? Yes. Take up serpents, lay hands on sick, they shall recover. So God's talking to us right now. So let's do this, saints. Lay your hands upon your heart. And we're going to make a declaration. And say this like you mean it. You can close your eyes if you want. Just listen to me or you can read it up on the screen. Say this with me. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. The only thing I want in my heart is God's word. Amen. Amen, saints. There you go. See? They shall recover. Psalms 19 verse 14 says... Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Hallelujah. That word meditation means the reflection, the quiet time. How many of us know it's, time, it's good to, to be quiet sometimes? Just sit there and, and think about how God is. And, and even if you don't think about it, you just see the beauty. The Bible says that glory, the glory of God, the heavens, the heavens declare His glory, but the earth His handiwork. You know, there's times I'll just sit out there and I'll look at the, the sky or the trees or the mountain. I'll say, gosh, you're so good, God. And God says, when you meditate like that on me, when you reflect on me, God is saying, it touches your heart. It touches your heart when you do those things. And so the, the, all the issues that were there are being taken away because we're meditating on the Spirit of God. Psalms 20 verse 4 says, May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. There it is. God put things in your heart to desire. And he says, guess what? Those things that I put in there will be fulfilled and your purpose will be fulfilled. Psalms 27, verse 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, Lord, 
Your face, your face, Lord, I will seek. You hear now? Your uh, saints, listen, let me share. If you have any doubts that you're not, that you say, well, bro, I'm really not seeking God's face like I should. Well, let me, let me share this with you right now. You're here right now. That's proof you're seeking God. You're here right now. Now, how did you get here? Because the Spirit of God spoke you to be here. So let's remember this right now. He's speaking to you right now. And he's, and he's letting you know that you are seeking him. And so don't ever think, well, you know, I, I can't hear from God. You're here today because you've heard from God. Yeah. Jesus. Verse 14 of Psalms 27 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. You know what that heart means? I, look, I, I, look, I looked up in the concordance what that heart means. It means the inner person. Literally means who you are. It means self. And it means, listen to this, the heart is a place of understanding. It's a place of focus. Did you know that when you read this, God will talk to your heart? I realized that when I read this, my focus gets back on God and his goodness and his faithful, his favor. And what did he say in verse 27? His strength. So when you focus back, you want to focus back on God, start reading this. And you can open up anywhere and start reading it. Because it's the word of God. It's alive. It's powerful. It's active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, God is saying. And it brings life. Amen? Psalms 44, 21 says, For God knows the secrets of the heart. Amen? Now, secrets, let me share this with you, saints, because sometimes we, we hear a word and we, and we think of it as wrong. Secrets don't always mean what you're hiding, right? Oh, you're going to find out my secrets? No. God goes, look, I know. I know your hurts. I know what's going on. I know at times you, uh, you sit there and you say, oh, man, I sure, wish, I sure wish my spouse would do something nice for me or give me a nice hug. Or I, I just wish that my parents would understand me. God knows all the secrets of the heart. See, God, God doesn't say, oh, you did something wrong, I'm going to get you. He doesn't do that. If they're in there, he's making an opportunity for you to get it out of there. Because he says that it, he's created a clean heart in you, a flawless heart, a heart of purity, a heart that's not broken anymore, not bruised anymore, but a heart that's sound and whole, God is saying. And so God wants you to know that. But in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, he says, Blessed are the pure in heart, my sister Megan. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, how did Sister Noah was going to have that scripture? Because the Spirit of God gave it to her. When she, was, when, she, when she brought that up, she said, Brother, can I share this? I go, what? That's part of the scripture. See, when God, and how did she know that? But the Spirit of God gave it to her. Let me read it to you again. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You know what it means by that? It means that you will see God in everything. You will, listen, you may not like this, you will see God in everyone. <laughs> oh, I can't be in that person. No, oh, look at that person. Look at the way that person talks. Well, find something in that person that God created and start from there and you'll see more. Guaranteed. Say, put the, God says, prove me if I want to show my word powerful. Prove him this, prove him this week that you will see God in everyone. Next time you see somebody, who you know that there's no God in him, look very closely at something and you'll find something and then go from there. Amen. I mean, when God creates us in Psalms 139, he makes us perfect. Amen. But we pick up stuff. There's a lifestyle. We cover ourselves up with the, the stuff of the world, but we're still there. We're still there. Come on, come on. Some of us, we still got stuff. But that's not who we are. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say who I was. I'm going to say who I am. All right? 
I'm, I'm, I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm blessed because God says I'm blessed. Now, at the time, I may not have felt like that, but I'm not going to say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm poor. Yeah, you're right. I don't have an education. I'm not smart. Yeah, you're right. I'm not going to agree with the world. I don't care what it says on, I don't care what it says on their paper. This is the paper I'm believing. Cannot be defeated. You cannot be defeated, saints. You cannot be defeated. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 and 35 says, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Verse 35 says, A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things. Amen? Now, you can read all that whole scripture there, but I'm just talking about the good things. God wants you to know the good things about what you should do. You got treasures, good treasures in your heart. Amen? Matthew 22, verse 37 says, and this is my Jesus speaking. He says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And I prophesy this word to you right now, everyone that's hearing. You will serve God. You will serve, I'm a, you will serve God with all your heart. You will serve God with all your soul. And you will serve God with all your mind. Because God's word says it. And you know what? I truly believe that. And so what I believe and what I'm saying is going to happen if you receive it. Now, there's another thing there. You got to receive it. God said, I'll manifest it, but you got to receive it. 1 Peter 3, 4. Let, I want to read 1 Peter 3, 4. This is something that only God can put together. It says in 1 Peter 3, 4. It says, do not, let, do not let your admiration be merely outwardly, arraigning the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Verse 4, but rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with, with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Now, you've heard this scripture before, and, 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 I, and verse three, chapter 3, verse 1 talks about wives. Well, I'm talking about everybody. Right? And so it's nice to dress up, right? Come on. I like to dress up. It's nice to dress up. It's nice to have nice clothes, nice shoes, and, and you know, and, and it's nice to look clean. It's, it's nice. It's just nice to look good, right? And God, God, and there's nothing wrong with that. But God is saying, but there's something in you that's brighter than that. He says, I want inside to shine also, God is saying. So how do you let that inside shine? You have joy, you have peace, you have love for one another, you have freedom. Hey, I'm free. I'm free. Ain't no chains on me. I'm free. What, what, what's that? What's that? There ain't no strings on me. I'm free. Right? That's, that's way before your generation. That's way back in, in an old Disney cartoon. He said, there ain't no strings on me. There ain't no chains on us, son, saints. That's what, they're re that's what they really see. They see... This is what they really see. When you, when you walk in that joy, you walk in that love, you walk in that freedom, you know what they see? They see Jesus in you. Jesus says, let them see me in you, the light. That's what happens. It's okay to dress up, but if you, if you, really, if you really want to show Jesus what you're wearing, they won't see. They'll see Jesus instead because that's what's going to attract their spirit man. See, we were all created to worship God, right? So when you meet somebody who is a servant of the Most High God, you connect right away. You connect right away because you know the whole purpose of it is to serve God. The whole purpose of it is for souls. And so God says that God wants us. He says, what I freely give to you, give to them. You don't charge them. You don't say, well, they're not, they don't go to my church, so I can't tell them about Jesus. They don't go to my church. I can't buy them lunch. Why not? Anybody would accept if you asked them to with a pure heart. Amen. Psalms 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Remember, saints, in Romans, in Romans when we read in Romans 8.10, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, the word of life. Believe what you say, and it shall be so. If you speak life, receive, speak life, Receive a clean heart, 
receive your pure heart, your flawless heart, your whole heart. What does Psalms 119 verse 11 say again? Your word I have hidden in my heart. And so what God is letting us know today is that what you need, he's doing in your heart right now. You're going to walk different, saints. You're going to act different. You're going to speak different because it's not you. It's I in you and you in me, Jesus is saying. And when the great I am is in you, all things are possible. All things are possible to him who believe. And God, God is, God is sharing, sharing with you right now. It's true. Blessed are you. But Lord, you don't know what they did to me. Blessed are you. But, but Lord, I don't have no money. Blessed are you. He's trying to get you to think, so, think, think a certain way. But Lord, everybody left me. Blessed are you. Sometimes it's good. Right? Right? God says, get that in your spirit that you're blessed. And then start speaking it. And then start believing it. And then let me do it for you. Why? Why does God want to do it for us? Because I truly believe the more we declare his word, the, the brighter the light in us shines. And the brighter the light shines in us, the more they see Jesus. And it's all about Jesus, saints. It's not about us accumulating wealth and material things. Those are good things. But God says that he wants the people to see the light because there's so many in darkness that they don't know where the light is. That's why they're going wherever they're going. But when they see the true light, the true and only God in us, they're going to want that because that's what they were created for. And when you accept them, no matter what they are, no matter how they look or how they act, when you accept them that way, then you got the victory in Christ Jesus. Because that's how we're supposed to ex accept everybody, just the way they are. God transforms them. God changes them. Amen? Amen? So again, I want to release that to you by the Spirit of God, that today God is saying your heart is freed, that today you have a clean heart, and that today, because we laid hands, that the only thing in your heart is God's Word. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord.